I know, you must be thinking this is just a clickbait. But now that you are here my friend, let me tell you, yes you can create nice highlights using a shadow in Photoshop. Let me show you how. Hello everyone, Indro here and today I will show you how you can create quick and nice easy highlights using the inner shadow technique in Photoshop. Now you must already be knowing that I have a dedicated video on how to do highlights using a solid color and I will not go into details, you can check the video from the description below and you can also use other highlight techniques like using hue saturation and others but in most cases you would be painting the highlights manually with a brush and this can be very tedious and time consuming if you have a very complicated subject like this. So I'll show you a pretty neat hack that can help you create nice rim and edge highlights and you can club it with your usual highlighting techniques. First I'll demonstrate the process with this simple composition and then I'll show you some real life examples with this artwork. So without further ado let's get started. So here goes our nice little subject and the very first thing that you need to do is isolate your subject into a new layer. Like I have done it already, you can cut it out or do whatever technique that feels right to you. You need to separate it out into a new layer to make this technique work. And as I mentioned earlier, this technique works pretty good with the rim and edge highlights. So I have also put the light source towards the back. So to apply this technique, all you need to do is double click on the layer or right click and go to blending options. and here is our shadow, click in our shadow and change the blending mode to linear dodge and change the color to something in the tone of the lights color. And there you have it. This is the basic concept. You can also play with the blending mode, see if color dodge or screen works best for you. It depends on the scene, but here I will keep it as linear dodge and I'll maybe turn the color towards this darker tone of yellow and let's increase the opacity a bit. And now we have to adjust the angle according to the light's direction. For that, make sure you always uncheck use global light, otherwise it will mess up your light direction. So let's turn this dial and see what matches. I think this is pretty fine and now let's play with the distance and the size you do not need to play with the choke but let's play with the distance and the size so let's decrease the distance a bit and also let's decrease the size a bit to create nice contrasty highlights along the edge now the good part with this technique is you can keep stacking inner shadow layer styles just by clicking this plus button Simply click this plus button and Photoshop will add another inner shadow. Now if you want to add a nice gradient or make the highlight look a bit feathered, you can also do that. For that simply increase this size value. This will create a more feathered look as you can see. So let's keep it around 15 and also we can increase the distance a bit. Let's increase the size a bit and we can reduce opacity for this layer style. Let's tweak the first inner shadow a bit. Let's increase the distance. This should be fine I guess. So let's click OK. I know you must be thinking this is easy but how do I get rid of the areas that I do not want like in this area it has some bleed in the bottom of this foot. So in layer styles we cannot erase away these areas. But don't worry we have a solution for that and I am coming to it pretty soon. But before that, let's spice up the composition by adding another light source. And let's again go into our blending options and we can add another inner shadow. And this time let's change the angle to match it with this purple light. And also let's change the color to something in a purple tone. And I think the distance and the size is fine over here. So let's click OK. So this is the before and this is the after. Now let's make it more interesting by bringing in some friends of his. And if you have something like this where you need to apply this same technique, all you need to do is copy the layer styles. So right click on the layer and select copy layer styles and you can go inside those subjects like here is our subject 2 and simply right click and paste the layer style. There you have it. You applied the highlights in just one click. Now obviously you can adjust it according to the size and shape of your subject. So let's decrease the distance a bit, let's decrease the size a bit. Let's do the same for all of these highlights. Maybe we can reduce opacity a bit. But you get the idea. 
Now, there's something different with this subject too, and that is we have a brightness and contrast adjustment layer added to it as a clipping mask. So I want to show you here is that the styles that you apply as a layer styles has higher priority than any clipping mask that you have added. So the highlights with the layer styles will apply as if they are on top of this brightness and contrast adjustment layer. Now, you can also apply this on top of groups. Let's say for subject three, I have this subject three over here, and maybe you have put it in some groups and added some adjustment layers to color correct and do all sorts of modifications. And you want to apply this highlighting on top of this group. So this is also possible. You can simply right click on the group and select base layer styles. So you have the layer styles applied on the group as well. So let's adjust it quickly. Okay, now to answer that question, how do we get rid of the areas that we do not want? This is actually very easy and Photoshop has given a nice handy way to do it, but we rarely use it. So all you need to do is right click on this FX icon, not on the layer, but right click on this FX icon and select create layers. What this will do is it will export out all your layer styles as separate layers and add them as clipping mask on top of your subject. So here you can see all those layer styles that I added, they are exported now as different layers. And with layers, you can do pretty much anything. You can even change the blending mode from linear dodge to anything else that you like, or you can add layer masks and paint away any areas that you do not want. So let's select the layer mask and I'll take a soft round brush and color black to hide away the areas that we do not need. So let's zoom in here and let's grab our brush. Let's make sure we are on the layer mask and let's paint away the areas. Let's create a layer mask over here as well. Let's do the same for this violet layer. And there we have it. Now even you can play with the blend if section. So let's double click and go to the blending options of these individual layers. And you know we prefer sliding this black node towards the right a bit so that it reveals some underlying details and makes the highlights look realistic. So you can also play with the blend if section if you want. Now let's quickly do the same for the other subjects and let's right click on the FX icon and select create layers. This time Photoshop is showing some prompt like some aspects of the effects cannot be reproduced with layers. Let's hit OK and let's see what difference we got. Since the brightness and contrast adjustment layer was added as a clipping mask on top of the subject, the exported layer styles layers got sandwiched in between them. So they are not getting applied correctly, but you can fix it easily. All you need to do is select all those layers that got exported out and drag them on top of any adjustment layer you have applied as a clipping mask. And so that fix the highlights. So let's also quickly add some layer masks over here just to fix any areas that we do not need. Here you go and let's do the same for the subject 3. This also works well with the grouped layers. Let's right click on the FX icon, let's select create layers. We have the layers exported out and added as a clipping mask on top of the group. Let's quickly add some layer masks and paint away these areas. Pretty cool, right? Now you can also club this with any highlighting techniques that you used previously. Like you can add a solid color fill as linear dodge on top of this layer and, and paint the highlights like you feel if it's missing in some areas. But also you can take use of these exported layers and modify these highlights a bit. For that, you simply need to select the highlights layer that got exported out and you need to select your smudge tool. So let's select our smudge tool and take a soft round brush. Keep the strength around 50% and let's zoom in over here. Maybe we want the highlights to also fall over here in this part so we can simply drag it like this. So this way you can make some quick minor adjustments if you feel like it's missing in some areas. Let's select the second highlights layer, maybe it's softer. So you get the idea, you see the difference it makes. So this is the overall technique and let's jump to another example with this composition. Now if you are wondering how I did this artwork, the breakdown video of this composition is coming in my next video. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you do not miss out that video. Alright, over here, this subject is super complicated and super detailed. So now if I wanted to paint it manually with the usual techniques, it would take forever I think. So let's quickly apply this inner shadow technique and let's zoom in a bit. Let's select our battle make one and let's right click and go to blending options. We need to enable our inner shadow. 
let's take a nice color that should match the sunset and we also need to match the angle linear dodge over here looks kind of weird so let's change it to maybe color dodge and it looks pretty nice maybe we need to change the color a bit yeah this should be good let's reduce the opacity a little bit and also let's add another inner shadow maybe we need to change the angle a bit 31 minus 31 should be all good let's do the same over here and this time i want to have a feathered look with this so let's increase the distance and also let's increase the size now let's decrease the opacity this is fine let's click ok and zoom out and it looks pretty good in my opinion now to correct things up i added a normal solid color fill in linear dodge and painted some highlights as you can see to fine tune things so let's copy the layer styles from here right click and select copy layer styles let's go to battle make 2 and right click and paste layer styles so there we have it but this is looking pretty weird we need to tweak it let's go inside the blending options let's decrease the distance a lot three pixels should be good let's decrease the size let's go to the second inner shadow let's decrease the distance here as well and let's decrease the size a little bit this should be okay let's copy the layer styles from here and let's place it on our third battle mech and now we have to change the angle i think let's turn off this one because it's too bright over here and let's turn the angle to something around minus 142 looks fine to me let's decrease the opacity a bit and let's reduce the size a bit maybe we can change the color a bit yeah and now you can see that we are having some areas over here where the light is bleeding so let's fix it all we need to do is right click on this fx icon and select create layer and it's again saying some aspects of the effects cannot be reproduced with layers let's click ok it's because we have lots of clipping masks on top of this layer all we need to do is select the layer and drag it on top of all those clipping masks and there we have it in a correct way let's select a layer mask and let's take a soft round brush with color black and paint away this area where we do not need it so this is the basic idea we can definitely work on it and fine tune things to get it more realistic but i hope you like the technique now i'll also leave a link to download this phd so that you can download it you can have fun with it practice and see how it's all done and if you create something i would love to see so be sure to post it on instagram and tag me over there but if this video helped you in any way be sure to like it and share with your friends and you can also watch my other video on highlights where we do it using a solid color fill and linear dodge the video should be coming up in the end card right now well then i will see you in my next video and till then enjoy creating